AQA A level physics for the engineering option, and this video is about non flow processes. So, this is the bit of the specification. I've actually combined a couple of bits together um, to try and do something which I think is logical. Anyway, let's dive in. Now, what is a non flow process? Basically, all it means is it's a fixed mass of gas. That's all it means. So the mass of the gas doesn't change. You will remember in the core physics this ideal gas equation or the equation of state for an ideal gas is another name for it. PV equals NRT. Let's just remind ourselves P is the pressure of the gas in newtons per meter squared or Pascal. V is the volume in meters cubed. Uh, little n is the number of moles. R is the gas constant and T is the temperature in Kelvin, PV equals NRT. And we're talking about a fixed mass of gas. Now, when we do things to a gas, if we compress it or if it expands or whatever, we can represent what's going on on a PV diagram. It's a graph of pressure against volume. Okay, now, Looking at this, one of the required practicals you probably did was Boyle's law. And you know that, you know, PV equals a constant from Boyle's law. And so pressure against volume might look like this. If we were compressing the gas, the volume gets smaller, the pressure gets bigger, and then expansion would be the opposite of that. So we can represent changes on a PV diagram. Now, if the temperature is constant, then PV equals a constant, as in PV equals NRT. So if T is constant, then PV is constant. And this kind of process, we say it's isothermal. So remember, isothermal means constant temperature. Now, there's another type of change, which is, let's say we were compressing the gas uh, and an external force quickly pushes the piston in and it happens so quickly that no heat is exchanged. What you probably find is that as you compress the gas, it gets hotter uh, and then some of this heat is lost to the surroundings. But if it's done very, very quickly, we can assume that no heat is exchanged with the surroundings and that is an adiabatic change. An adiabatic change is when no heat is exchanged with the surroundings. In this case, no heat is lost. Also, this is a, an adiabatic expansion. This gas is expanding. And as it expands, it's, it's doing work and its temperature will go down. But if it happens very quickly, we can assume that it is adiabatic also. So the gas is doing work, pushing the piston out, and it happens so quickly that no heat is exchanged. It is an adiabatic change. In both cases, Q equals zero, so W equals minus U. Now, the pressure volume graph, the PV graph, for an adiabatic process is very similar. For the isothermal process, it was just PV equals constant, but for an adiabatic one, it's PV to the gamma equals constant. And gamma is a constant for a particular gas, and it's called the adiabatic index. And it's to do with the specific heat capacity of the gas, okay? For air, uh, gamma is 7.5. You'd be given a value in the exam. OK, so the graph is very, very similar. It, it looks like a, an isothermal graph, but it is slightly different. So the PV for graph for an adiabatic change is very similar to an isothermal change and PV to the gamma equals a constant. Another couple of changes which might occur, you could have uh, the gas expanding at constant pressure or you could have uh, a change in pressure at constant volume. And if that happens, that's what they would look like on a PV graph. 
Now, why all these different changes on a, on a PV graph? Well, uh, imagine this gas expands a little bit so that its volume increases by a very small amount, delta V. And because it's a very small change, we'll assume that the pressure of the gas changes very little. So the volume is increased delta V, and we will assume that the pressure is constant. Now, the work done, therefore, force times distance, and if you look at the little derivation, it's pretty straightforward. We get the work done by an expanding gas at constant pressure is P times delta V. Bear in mind that you can only use this equation if the pressure is constant. OK, in terms of actually doing sums, you might be given a sum using this W equals P delta V. That's the work done by an expanding gas at constant pressure. Now, looking at this graph, obviously the pressure isn't constant. However, for our small change delta V, the work done is the area of the rectangle. Therefore, the total area can just be thought of as lots and lots of rectangles. And so we get the work done is the sum of all these little rectangles, which is PDV, the integral of PDV. In other words, the area under the PV graph. So the work done, either for a gas expanding or for compressing a gas, is the work, sorry, beg your pardon, the work done is the area under the curve. On a PV graph, work done is area under the curve. And that's going to be very useful later on when we look at engine cycles. For example, looking at this, this is an engine cycle uh, for a petrol engine. It's called the Otto cycle. Don't need to know that. And basically, there are different changes happening to the gas. The gas is compressed. Uh, then it's ignited because there's some fuel in there and then it expands and it does work uh, and then it's a cycle so it happens again and again and again and the work done the work done by the piston or if you like the work done by the gas is the area of the loop so it's the area under the top curve minus the area under the bottom curve OK, so the work done per cycle is the area of the loop in this engine cycle. And we're going to talk a lot more about engine cycles in the next video.